Our last panelist today, um, grateful to have him here, Matt Kidd, joining us from Cross Harbor Capital Partners. He's the managing director, um, one of the larger employers of the region and also one of the larger uh, developers of the state. Uh, Matt, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Eric. Uh, very happy to be here. Nice to see everyone. You know, one of the things that I, when I start, we started this panel, I, I, one of the reasons that we also wanted to do it was document and history. And there were so many big decisions made in leading up to closing down. Um, and I, I'd like for you, you know, Taylor Middleton did this and, and a few other, other leaders in the area and you being an integral part of Big Sky. Tell us what it was like that, that week leading up to having to make the decision to close down your resorts and, and the subsequent decisions of how you, how you set things up moving forward. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Thanks for the question, Eric. And uh, yeah, that week leading up to uh, March 15th, 16th was really like nothing I've ever been a part of from a decision making. Kind of the one uh, snippet I've, I've used a lot in the last month or so to describe that is just we probably made a thousand decisions that week. And every time we made a decision within the hour, it was stale. And uh, just um, feeling like uh, that. Uh, it was, it just every time we made a decision within the hour, it was stale. And, um, uh, you know, just, I think that that weekend we were supposed to have a big concert at uh, Yellowstone Club. A lot of folks in the community are aware of that. Um, and even actually only like a week in advance of that, it seemed crazy to have to think about not having that event. And we went from, you know, all the way from, you know, this, span of a week, not being able to have one big event to feeling like we needed to, to close down all operating businesses that we are a part of in Big Sky. Um, and actually the number one reason we ultimately made the decision to close down all the operating businesses is to support the local community and for the benefit of the local uh, healthcare system. You know, at that time, Big Sky Medical Center had one ventilator. You know, there were, I don't know, 10, 15,000 people in Big Sky the week before March 15th, and there was one ventilator in Big Sky. We were watching what was happening in Colorado. We were watching what was happening in other parts of the country, and we had to make the decision uh, for the benefit of the broader community, community to close down all these operating businesses and essentially stop the tr uh, so much transient business from coming uh, from coming in, in into the market. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, it's almost like taking that and putting it in a time capsule. Some, it was a crazy time and, and um, obviously thinking on your feet. So thank you for that. I, I, I will add, I'll add just one other like tidbit on that as well. It was you know, that Saturday night, uh, again, sort of lots of decisions leading up to Saturday night around, uh, you know, handling food and beverage differently, uh, handling various aspects of operations differently. But in terms of how quickly the ultimate decision came to close, you might remember this, Eric, we were on a phone call Saturday evening at five o'clock, right before it was, it was us, uh, as well as Taylor Middleton, right before we got on the phone, um, uh, Vail decided to close all of their resorts. While we were on the phone, Altera closed all of their resorts. And then it was very quickly after that, that uh, we needed to make the decision just to close down uh, everything in Big Sky. We were hearing lots of things from members, even of employees, around the communities and the clubs, specifically Yellowstone Club, and people saying, oh, you really don't have to close. Yellowstone Club's different, but the reality is for the benefit of protecting this community, uh, it's not any different and we had to make that decision to close. No, absolutely. Um, for those people that aren't familiar with it, I mean, construction and tourism in Big Sky is one of the largest economic drivers in the state of Montana. And you guys are a big part of that. Help people understand the scope and scale of your business, not only in terms of the different entities that you manage but how many direct staff you've got and have you guys ever tried to articulate on how many you know indirect through subcontractors you guys employ sure great question eric yeah we think a lot about it um uh so cross arbor in big sky we oversee yellowstone club and then all the various businesses that roll up through what we call Wall mountain land company um, and that includes spanish peaks moonlight basin and then all of our businesses in town center here so the wilson hotel uh, we have about 70 units of residential uh, units here in, in town center, and then about 55,000 square feet of commercial space as well. So those are all the businesses um, in Big Sky directly that we oversee under Cross Harbor. Um, we have approximately 600 full-time year-round employees across all of those operating businesses. 
uh, during the peak operational seasons. Winter is a busier season for us than summer, uh, but at the peak of the winter season, we employ directly about 2,000 employees across all of those uh, operating businesses. And in addition to that, um, you know, we have approximately 2,000 um, contractors uh, working in terms of construction across Town Center, Yellowstone Club, Spanish Peaks, and Moonlight Basin on any given day, at least prior to 40 days ago. Um, and then, you know, as well as there's, there's numerous more employees in terms of supporting uh, in, indirect, not just construction, but other indirect businesses that support um, the operations of each of those projects. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's massive to think, you know, upwards of 5,000 people and, and, and a lot of tentacles that go out from there. Um, you know, real estate is a, is a huge part of your guys' business model. Um, how has real estate been the last 37 days and, and how is it feeling going into the next, you know, the next quarter? Sure. Yeah, great question, Eric. You know, the, uh, there are not a lot of, you know, the, the folks that are still in Big Sky right now, it's very limited. Um, I would say, you know, sort of in terms of potential home occupancy, less than 15% across our second home communities, Yellowstone Club, Spanish Peaks, and Moonlight. There's very limited um, uh, uh, occupancy here in Big Sky at the moment. Many people have gone back to their primary communities, which is what we wanted when we had the, uh, when we decided to shut down. Um, but, uh, and, and, in, and in fact, there has not been a lot of re new real estate transactions in the last 30 days, as you can imagine. Um, and that, that is unfortunate. It's certainly a big part of the sales season that late March, early April, that is a big part of um, all those businesses, all the real estate companies, all the sellers looking to sell property in Big Sky, that hurts to have lost that uh, last, last key part of the the winter season, but thankfully we are not seeing many transactions fall out of contract. In fact, in many cases, the buyers are more adamant making sure the sellers still wanna sell because they really wanna get their big sky property. I think that when we think long-term, uh, you know, the next you know, five uh, to eight years down the road, big sky looks sort of more desirable than it ever has. People that are looking to get out of New York, Boston, San Francisco, Seattle, and, and get and come to Big Sky with wide open spaces, uh, fewer people. I think we expect there to be significant demand uh, for Big Sky over the long run, but certainly it's not a time right now for new transactions. And we're trying to coach both um, our sort of anybody in the market that's looking to sell property. We're trying to help them uh, sort of through a time of uncertainty in selling their property um, and for and sort of keeping the the from a buyer standpoint, keeping the transactions in process, you know, in place. But overall, um, there's been very few transactions that have fallen out of contract. Uh, and in fact, most people um, are sort of more excited than ever to become big sky property owners. Great. Um, you know, going back to you guys are obviously, you know, a huge driver in the economy, large employer, have the large projects going. Um, what types of things are you starting to plan for in terms of helping reboot things in health? Obviously, you played a huge role in the Big Sky Relief Fund. So I, and the fund, maybe touch on that for a second, but also what other ideas are starting to come out on turning how to, you know, ideas on how to turn the machine back on and, and reboot it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, a couple of things. One, I think Dan actually said it really well when he described the fact that we just, we sort of had to close a month early. And I think that you know, for Big Sky as a whole, for this whole community, you know, we're really fortunate that this happened on March 15th and not December 15th. And this would have been an entirely different economic situation for every business, ours included, uh, in Big Sky if we were, if this had come about on December 15th uh, at versus March 15th. So we feel, you know, really fortunate about that. Um, we were able to pay all of our seasonal employees through their committed end date. So folks that were prepared to work all the way through the middle of April we paid those seasonal employees uh, in full. We've also been very fortunate in that we have not furloughed a single employee across any of our operating businesses um, uh, this, 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 this spring. So we feel really fortunate about that. We're very sort of hopefully optimistic about this summer. I think that we definitely expect there to be changes. I feel fortunate that I don't have to make a huge decision until uh, you know really the middle of May. We have the benefit of seeing how the next couple of weeks play out, um, hearing what all the governors, not only here in Montana, but throughout the country, what they all have to say around 
kind of phased reopenings, but Big Sky doesn't get busy until the middle of June. So we don't have, we have some time before we have, before we need to make, you know, meaningful decisions. I know of a lot of June weddings that have been postponed a year. September weddings are largely still on the books. People were hopeful, you know, that by September, they will be, uh, they will be able to do something. I will say a lot of the, the conversations right now around, okay, well, we're going to do X, Y, and Z differently. That some of that may, feels to me like the, those, those decisions leading up to closing. Like it just feels like, you know, sort of ultimately, we tried to make all these operational changes that sort of ultimately weren't good enough and we had, and we had to close. And I think that the number one thing for getting, for having a strong summer sales season here is extensive testing. And you heard what testing and tracking and what uh, Governor Bullock had to say. And I think this country is very, um, there's a lot of ingenuity in this country. And I'm, we know through you know, various um, relationships that we have, people are working on, not, it's not just about producing more of the tests that exist today, but actually generating and creating new types of tests that are much faster um, such that people can be tested more frequently and, and, and a, in a faster way. You're talking about sort of ideally less than five minutes, uh, 10 minutes. I know that there are tests today that you can get a pop, you can get a reading within 15 minutes. That's what we need are tests that are very quick in order to be able to, uh, you know, sort of have as, as close to an operating uh, summer season as possible. The more testing and ultimately the more tracking we have, um, that, that will help us. I think that those the sort of tracking and tracing, that technology largely exists today. I don't think it will be that difficult for the sort of technology leaders in this country to roll that out in a relatively big way. There's some political questions that will need to get asked there, but the technology for the, the tracking and tracing will be, you know, I think in relatively short order, readily available. The testing still has a little bit of a ways to go, but, um, you know, in Big Sky, we're targeting sort of March 10th to March 15th as the week to make some really big decisions. Right now, we're, we're planning for the two, you know, sort of ends of the spectrum from having the busiest season ever with every second homeowner in this whole community desiring to come to Big Sky and spend the summer in Montana to shelter in place um, uh, orders still being in place and people not being able to travel here at all. So um, you heard uh, both the governor and Cam uh, speak about limitations on um, sort of international workforce. That's something that we're taking largely into consideration right now and planning for alternatives to having, as, as everyone knows, Big Sky has a, a significant amount of seasonal and international workforce, and we're planning for alternatives uh, to that, and as well as being able to operate with just simply a, a more, slightly more limited staff uh, this summer. But, you know, for me, I, again, I feel sort of fortunate that we have a couple more weeks to make, to make some decisions. We, you know, we don't have to make a decision tonight. Um, and we're very optimistic that come the middle of May, we'll know a lot more about testing, we'll know a lot more about tracing, and we can have uh, a pretty spectacular summer here in Big Sky. Sure. Well, that's great. Um, talk a little bit about, and then we'll get, grab a couple questions from Joe, but just on how serious you guys have taken this. Obviously, when we talked about the massive scope, you guys got clubs, you've got construction sites, you've got a lot of workers. You know, how, how serious have you guys taken this COVID situation in terms of creating safe and work environments, not only now, but moving forward and then being able to ultimately go into the, as the season opens and, and making plans to have safe work sites as well as clubs and, and community gathering areas. Sure. Well, obviously construction continues and I'll come back to that in a second, but to answer your question, I don't think that we could have taken this any more seriously in terms of protecting this community. As we sit here on April 20th, I expected there to be significantly more you know, cases and an outbreak. And, and I expected a much more negative situation in Big Sky than we've ended up with, just based on what I saw happen in Colorado and Seattle and other places. And I feel extremely fortunate to be here and that we haven't had uh, those situations happen here in Big Sky. As soon as we made the decisions to close, my first call was to Jason Smith with Big Sky Medical Center uh, and Bozeman Health. And I said, Jason, what do you need? What do we, we, what do we need? I thought that on Wednesday morning, the 18th, I thought that 200 people were going to show up at the hospital, you know, looking to be tested. Thankfully and amazingly, that did not happen. But we went to work immediately on helping provide the hospital 
uh, with everything that they would need. As I mentioned earlier, they had one ventilator at that time. Uh, we, with, we worked with the community foundations. We helped to create this Big Sky Relief effort. And we basically gave the hospital as, you know, as many resources as they needed to get more ventilators, not only for Big Sky, but for Bozeman, to expand the hospital and to make sure that the medical system, again, we're talking about the week of March 16th here. That's when we were making all these decisions and doing all these things to make sure the hospital had what it needed for an outbreak that thankfully still hasn't happened here. And we feel really thankful, again, that that, that, that has been the case. In terms of construction, we immediately went to work applying social distancing. Although, we, although it was very clear to decide to close down all the operating businesses, we followed Governor Bullock's directive that construction was an essential business and we kept construction going. I think people should understand the complexities from a legal, financial, contractual standpoint in shutting down construction sites. That is an extremely complicated, essentially you can't make it type of a decision. And so we followed Governor Bullock's directive. We've kept construction going, but have made significant changes across the board, applying social distancing, eliminating all buses, Sorry about that, Dan. We do hope to have car stage uh, back to work busing uh, more employees soon. But for now, we've eliminated all busing of construction workers, um, applying social distancing on larger sites. We're doing temperature testing um, of making sure that anybody working on the site uh, has a fever, um, that they are not allowed on site for 14 days. Um, as, as folks have read and explored Big Sky on the montage site in Spanish Peaks, we did have an instance of one positive case. It was, it was in a specific subcontractor pool, and we immediately sent everyone home that had been in touch with, in contact with that person for the last 14 days. We sent all of those people home for the next 14 days, um, and so we feel we did subsequently learn through um, through Matt Kelly's and the Galveston County Health Department's efforts that some of the workers that we sent home to other parts of Montana tested positive in those locations, but we have not had another positive test case on that job site uh, ever since. So we have seen significant slowdowns. I mean, there were weeks where I would describe productivity at like 20% or less on individual job sites. But across the board today, I would say Big Sky's construction market is back at about 75 to 80% productivity. Um, that's largely a sort of labor related comment. Um, I think that there are likely to be certain supply chain issues, but um, again, we've taken this extremely seriously, applying social distancing uh, and, and numerous other things, with temperature testing and the like. Uh, anybody that had so much as a sniffle, we told them, don't come to work, stay home for 14 days. Um, we're, of course, working with all of our contractors and subcontractors to accept the fact that projects are going to take longer to build and, and will likely cost more to build. It's the reality of the of the situation that we find ourselves but look those are small problems compared to keeping this community health he healthy and safe and that has been our number one primary focus from all of the decisions that we have made over the course of the last six weeks excellent well i and thank you for that matt and i, I the last question I, I would have is this is it matt obviously a lot of people look to the decisions that you guys are making that are not, you know, whether it's a restaurant or a retail shop or a lot of businesses are reliant on the decisions you guys make in terms of, you know, how fast you develop and, and, and what types of resources you put into getting the economy rolling here again and, and, and how big sky landscape starts to look as it develops. Is there anything you want to close with in terms of talking to, especially all those business owners out there that are not under your umbrella and, and, and also any advice as we look into the summer? Yeah, I appreciate that, Eric. I mean, I think that, you know, for all of us, we're trying to be cautiously optimistic. You know, I think you have to, just like we are planning for those two barbells of very limited uh, occupancy and very limited activity to the busiest summer ever, I, I think I'd encourage every business owner in this community to be preparing for all of those plans as well. Um, I think that uh, for our tenants, we're, we're, it's, it's, everything is sort of an individual decision, but we're working with them on uh, whether it's helping with PPP loans or working with them related to rent payments and other financial obligations. We're working with folks um, you know, to, to, to help them keep their businesses moving forward as best as possible. Um, and yeah, I just think right now, honestly, 
for the next two weeks, I would tell people to almost pretend like it's the start of the off season as normal, you know, like there's still, there's some sunshine today. It was a beautiful day. Could people still go for a hike or a cross country ski? Like actually for the next two weeks, enjoy the outdoors a little bit. You don't have big sky doesn't have to make a big decision for the next two weeks. So, you know, for, for, for families that are, had their kids at home, spend a couple extra, spend some extra time with your families and your kids while they're there. We have time before we have to make another big decision. That's, that's what I'm actually trying to do. I'm trying to uh, uh, spend some extra time with my wife and our, our children. I mean, I would encourage all Big Sky uh, owners as well to do something similarly, while again, being cautiously optimistic about these scenarios to prepare for the future. And look, when we have, we, we try to be extremely transparent with our employees, with our members. We wanna be transparent with this community as well. When we have, just when we're making decisions that are relevant for this broader community, we will come to explore Big Sky and we will make, we will make, we will let everyone know what those decisions are. Um, but for now, maintain that cautious optimism uh, and try to enjoy some extra time outside.